Nicola Sturgeon, before she even opens her mouth, you know what she's going to say. My mother can't stand her. Ah, is she still here? Ah, I just can't stand that woman. Break up the union, break up the union. I mean, it appears that Nicola Sturgeon will work with anyone as long as they support breaking up the United Kingdom. Now, when Sinn Féin became the largest party in the Northern Ireland Assembly this month, she couldn't wait. She held talks with their vice president, Michelle O'Neill, at her official residence, Butte House, in Edinburgh. Both women are at the head of devolved governments, both looking for referendums, Sinn Féin on a united island, and we all know what Nicola Sturgeon wants. She's already tried the angle of Brexit, saying that Scotland voted to stay and that the situation has changed to justify her rehashing her so-called once-in-a-lifetime referendum. That didn't work. Then, of course, Covid came along and at the beginning she seemed to be making all the right calls, didn't she? Repeatedly upstaging Boris Johnson, going bigger and bolder. When he had three tiers or levels, she had five, anticipating his every move and going first, so it appeared that she was making decisive calls. She could do no wrong. She stood at that lectern, preaching like a pope to his followers. She even started throwing money around, giving extra support to those who were unable to work during the pandemic. She seemed to have a never-ending supply of cash, a lot coming from the taxpayers of the United Kingdom. Unfortunately for her, her lockdown madness and mask control got the better of her, a bit like Mark Drakeford, remember that? In Wales, when he tried to decide which things were essential items that supermarkets could sell during his power-craved lockdown. Sadly, his list didn't include things like tampons. He's a man, so why would he think of that? His plan would actually have shut down pharmacies and off-licences and actually crushed the local economy. Bless him. He thought he was helping. Sadly, the power got to Sturgeon's head, which was enough to give the Scottish people a peek into a world where Nicola Sturgeon ruled, and it wasn't pretty. Her latest meeting with Ms O'Neill, she claims, was purely to discuss the cost of living crisis and the Northern Ireland Protocol. Told the other one. When asked if she considered Sinn Féin to be an ally, she said, Not really. The circumstances and factors in Northern Ireland are different to the circumstances and factors in Scotland, and I think we should be careful about drawing comparisons that don't exist. But then she argued that both parts of the UK were being forced to deal with the, I quote, very negative consequences of Brexit, despite their populations voting against it, and this has raised fundamental questions about the Westminster system of governments. Code for break up the union. So whilst those in Scotland are suffering with the same cost of living crisis created partly by the politicians and in particular unnecessarily long lockdowns, self-obsessed career politicians who can't think beyond their own short-sighted vision, Nicola Sturgeon is still going on about breaking up the union.